Well, good morning, everyone. I'm out here in Alabama Hills, and I'm gonna be taking some images with the Leica Q2 today and the Sony a7R5 today, and we're gonna see how they compare. A lot of people that shoot Leica love to talk about the Leica look. We're gonna shoot these two identical photos today at 28 millimeters and see if you can tell the difference between the Leica and the Sony. So what I've got going on here today is I've got the Leica Q2 and I currently have the Leica Q2 set up um, at f4. Obviously the lens is 28 and I'm shooting across this incredible, incredible landscape waiting for the sunrise. And I mean, look at that. That's amazing, right? I recently picked up the a7R5 as well. I'm a Sony commercial shooter. We have Sony's latest and greatest. The, the settings are identical. The framing is identical. I've tried to completely match this shot so that we can do a very fair comparison. As I'm out here for this shoot, one of the things that I feel like we're all feeling because of Instagram and other platforms like that is that this concept of adventure photography is kind of dead. I don't think it's even dying anymore. I think it's, it's dead. We have seen the same images over and over and over so many times between places even like this i mean this is alabama hills california it has been photographed i don't know millions of times especially in the last five years there's really nothing new that i'm gonna bring to the table today so whatever i get here it's not gonna be the best shot of alabama hills but it's gonna be my shot adventure photography just it's kind of dead why keep doing it i think is what a lot of people are feeling like do we want to see i mean do you even want to see more pictures of the same 30 places in the u.s that everyone seems to want to go constantly i don't think you do i don't even if i see the same cliche photo from the u.s or europe on my instagram feed i just keep scrolling if that's the case why are we even out here and as much as like we can acknowledge the fact that adventure photography is dead adventures are not dead i am loving the fact that i got up this morning well before the sun the sun's still not even up yet and i'm out here shooting experiencing something that honestly makes me feel alive i'm here it's cold january in alabama hills i've got this beautiful landscape here like everything about this morning is, it's literally perfect. The adventure is not dead. So these photos don't matter as much to me as being here in this place and in this moment. Let's shoot a little bit. So here's the thing, finding a vantage point that hasn't been done before, it doesn't exist. Everything has been done over and over and over. I mean, even right now, like, as I'm shooting up on the hill, there are these people that are taking the same cliche photo that people have taken a hundred times, which is why Instagram is so dead, is that we're all seeing the same 30 photos over and over and over. I recognize, like, I'm out here doing the same thing, but, trying to find some a new way to capture it is like I feel like one of the most important things it's tough but getting it done okay so now we're back in my space and we're going to take a look at two 
RAW files, one from the Sony, one from the Leica. We're gonna dive into what they look like just straight out of the camera, and then what they look like when I throw one of my edits on each photo. So a couple of things before we dive into it. The first thing is that I tried to match these two shots completely identical in the settings and everything, and so what we did here was I had both cameras set up side by side on the tripods as you just saw a minute ago. I had the Sony 16-35 G Master on the A7R5 so I could get it dialed in at 28. So they were both at 28. I set the custom white balance the same so that they would have like the exact same white balance. The aperture was f4 for both cameras. The only thing that would have been like drastically different would I, I had them both at their native lowest ISO and on the Leica it goes down to 50. I wanted just a super clean image and on the Sony at 100 but I still expose them the same. If, if those things really matter to get an, a one-to-one -one exact test, then I think we're getting a little too away from the art and a little too into the technical. But this is a technical experiment, so I do want us to look at the technical. So let's go ahead and take a look at the screen here. And you'll see that I've got two photos side by side. Just right now, your gut reaction, and I know you're seeing them very small. Which one do you think is the Leica and which one do you think is the Sony? I'll show them to you up close here. This is photo one, take it all in for just a minute, and photo two, just go ahead and take that in as well. So let's hop back over to this view, and you can see which one is which. This one on the right is the Leica, this one on the left is the Sony. And again, you see uh, very similar settings, except for the ISO and the exposure. Now, this was blue hour, so this was pretty dark outside. Three second exposure on the Leica, five second on the Sony because the Leica was at ISO 50 and the Sony's at ISO 100. So as we're looking at these raw files here, I'm gonna go ahead and close that up. Let's do a little pixel peeping. Now, the 16 to 35 is an incredible lens from Sony. I don't shoot a ton of super wide landscapes anymore. I like to do a little more like true to my eye at 50 or even further telephoto, but the 16 to 35 just gets it all and it's absolutely beautiful. So what I want us to look at though is obviously there's some color differences here. You can see that the Sony rendered blue a little more blue to purple, whereas the Leica rendered blue a little more blue to teal. Uh, you can also see that there's a little more saturation in the browns on the Leica, whereas on the Sony, not quite as saturated. But we are gonna pixel peep here and hit these rocks, because what I found really interesting was the difference between the two photos, like right in this area here. Now, if you look kind of at these shadows, and we're, we're really zoomed in here, you know, so it's not gonna be completely sharp, because I mean, look how far in we're zooming to get to this. But if you look around here, you'll see that it's kind of flat in the shadows. But when I look at the Leica, I feel like I'm getting a lot more like just pop off this photo. And, and again, like it could be just in my mind because we've heard about the Leica look being about that 3D pop. But I really do feel like I see a 3D pop here when I compare these two photos. The Sony has a little bit of a higher resolution, of course, because it has more megapixels, but Let's put these side by side and just kind of look at them in that regard. Again, this, the Leica is on the right, the Sony is on the left. We're gonna match these up as best we can. And just take a look at that and, and look at the difference in the, the contrast and really just like the, again, like I can't think of another word except for that 3D pop that, that we hear about so much from Leica. Because when I look at this, I just see that 3D pop all the way. When I look a little deeper into it and I start to see the shadows here, these shadows are kind of true to the way blue is getting rendered on the sensor. So like on the Sony, blue is getting rendered a little more towards purple, whereas on the Leica, blue seems to be getting rendered a little more towards teal. And you know, for me, when I edit my photos, I very much push blue to teal. And so I feel like that with the Leica, I'm actually getting a little closer to the colors that I typically edit my Sony files with and have for many years. Let's take a look now like uh, at the peak and just kind of look at how the browns get rendered as well. I mean, look right here. You really can see what I'm talking about with the blues 
very clearly here that the Leica sensor is is interpreting blue a little more on the teal side, the Sony sensor a little more on the purple uh, side. And, and then look at the way the browns on the, the Leica, I feel like they're just a touch more saturated. They have a little more color in them, a little more richness. I especially see that at the base of the mountain in the rock piles. I mean, you can see right here, there's just way more like warmth and color. and. And I, I wonder if the Leica look, if what, when people really talk about it, if they're really describing contrast and saturation. Now I'm gonna take these two photos and pull up edits that I've done on them. This is how I would edit my photos. And so, uh, and you can see all my settings here. Don't care, copy them, whatever. <laughs> People that get uptight about their presets and their look, every person has a style, a look, and we all get influenced by each other, so, so who cares? Now, if I look at this Leica file, I'm gonna show you the before and after. Before and after, okay. There's the Leica again. See, this one's the Leica. Before and after. And then let's take a look at the Sony. You see here, before and after. I believe I did a pretty good job of getting these to match, Leica on the right, Sony on the left, but I did have to do a couple of things and they're super subtle on the Sony file to make it match the Leica. One thing I did was I had to saturate the blue a touch more than my preset calls for. This is straight out of the box on my preset and this is pushing the blue a little bit. Something else that I had to do was I had to push a little more contrast and color into the shadows on the Sony file. So to make these rocks more consistent, what I did was in my color grading, you can see here, I um, color graded these at 41, which is very warm. And then I've got it saturated at 18. Here, you'll see that the saturation, this is my preset, is at nine, but I had to double it here to 18 to get that same color. So all in all, as I'm looking at these two photos, I think they're very close to one another, except I would say that the Leica has just more pop to it. So pulling the raw file back up and just looking again at what the sensor gave me here, one of the things I found really interesting was how the shadows play out a little differently. Like on the Sony, for instance, if you look at this, the shadows are really smooth. If I pull them down or push them up, there is a wide range to these shadows and very smooth roll off between the shadows and the highlights. So again, like let's take a look at the highlights now. Super smooth roll off between the two. But if I go to the Leica, it's kind of a different experience. If I pull the shadows down, they get pretty black pretty fast. And especially like if you look at the left side of the screen, how dark it gets, it gets pretty dark. If I push it, or pull it, it's still, it doesn't look bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I do feel like it's a little more intense than say the Sony is. So I, I think the shadows and the dynamic range on the two sensors are, are quite different. At least from my perspective, they feel different when I'm editing. So all in all, like I, I do feel like that the photos here, they're not too far from each other when it comes to dynamic range or even like color rendering, not too crazy far from each other. You know, we've seen that the Leica has more teal blue versus the Sony having more of a purple blue. We see the browns and the rocks have more saturation, a little less saturation on the Sony. Okay, so taking a look at two other photos, two sunrise photos, we've got the Leica here and we've got the Sony here. And I have a little exposure compensation on the Leica to get them to match on the histogram. Um, I shot these a little differently. You can see the aperture is the same, but the ISO again, 50 on the Leica, 100 on the Sony, 150th of a second on the Sony and 160th on the Leica. So I had to have a little exposure compensation to make up for that on the Leica, but let's just do a quick comparison again, like take a look at the mountains here. And I think you will see if I put the Leica, let's swap these so the Leica is on the left. If I zoom in on the peak, 
take a look at the color differences. And again, you know, this is maybe a little subtle, but I, I definitely see that there's more saturation on the Leica file than there is on the Sony file. Much uh, more orange tone. Like there, there definitely is orange in both photos, but this just feels a little more saturated. Uh, if I come out, I mean, look at the, the difference in the browns here in this rock pile and look at it here in this rock pile. You see that the Q2 is picking up just more color, more warmth, more, just more richness in the color tones. And also again, like we talk about that 3D pop, let's take a look at the rock piles over here and just kind of see the difference. I mean, I find this to be a massive, massive difference. If we even look just up here in this area here, and then as well as the rocks, the Q2, it's that Leica lens, it's that Sumalux lens, it just has this like complete pop to it. And this isn't to say Sony or Canon or Nikon, whatever you shoot, it's not bad. And like, it doesn't mean the Leica is necessarily better. It's just a different thing. And I mean, I love my Sony system and I'm a, I'm a Sony shooter through and through with multiple <laughs> Sony cameras and a bunch of GM lenses. And so I'm deep in Sony, but I gotta say there's something like about this Leica and about this lens that, that just looks so freaking good. <laughs> And it's funny because as the sky got more teal, I feel like Sony was pretty true to the teal in the sky. I mean, look, the sky looks identical now with the Sony and the Leica. If we just look at it at this level, side by side, Leica on the left, Sony on the right, they have, like look to the, to the left of the peak. Those are like nearly identical. And by the way, these are the raw files. These are not edited. These are just straight out of the camera. Overall, these are very complementary systems. I don't have a Canon system to do this with or Nikon or Fuji, but I'll tell you, if you're a Sony shooter and you're thinking about picking up a Leica, I do feel like it sits in the, in the Sony system pretty well. It probably does the same with Canon or any other system too. But at the same time, there's quite a bit of difference in the way that the lens is, and, and the sensor is, is working here. And of course there would be their different systems. The Leica is a joy to shoot. It is so much fun, as I said in my last video, and I really enjoy using the Leica for this. And what I think is gonna happen here is I think I'm gonna continue to use my Sony system for a lot of my commercial work. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a workhorse camera, but this really has its own vibe and its own thing. And God, I hate that word vibe. I don't know why I used it. This camera has its own love and its own life and its own strengths. And honestly, I'm not feeling like it has too many weaknesses. Okay, that, that would be a little unfair. It definitely has weaknesses. And I might do a video about the things I don't like about it. But right now, I'm still in the honeymoon phase of this camera and I'm really loving it. And as you can see here, when you look at these images, they're just, they're special. They're, they're beautiful. And I'm really digging how the Leica system is rendering blues. I think that's my favorite thing it's doing. I hope you find this video to be helpful and have found it to be interesting. I plan on continuing to put out videos like this and so if you love gear, give me that old subscribe and like this video, share it out with your people who are other gear heads. Another thing I would encourage you to do is check out my website, dave.online, links right below and Take a look at my blog. I write a lot about gear on there with a lot of images. I have a lot of galleries. Right before this shoot in Alabama Hills, I walked through a ghost town right next door to this, uh, just with the Leica. I left the Sony system in the case and I have a whole blog about that. So go check that out. Thanks for watching and for following along and uh, just get ready because we have a lot more content coming this year. We'll see you next time.